Uh, hello, everyone. Thanks for coming to attend our talk. Uh, my name is uh, Zhi Jieshen. Uh, this is my colleague, uh, Jian He. Uh, we are working for Hortonworks, and uh, we are the uh, uh, committer in the, Hadoop, uh, in the Apache Kong uh, um, found, uh, Foundation. And uh, today, we are going to give a general talk about uh, Apache Hadoop YAM, the next generation operating systems for generic uh, distributed applications. Uh, and we are coming here because we are actively working on YAM, so we are co come to speak the cool stuff about YAM. Today, our talk is going to uh, cover the following four aspects. First, I'm going to give a brief introduction about the background and the motivation about YAM. And uh, next, I will go through some basic concepts about YAM. And afterwards, my colleague, Jen, is going to introduce you guys about the recent development in, the, in this project and uh, also introduce how to write a young application. So let's go to the first part. These are the two questions that I have observed on the user mailing list of Hadoop frequently. One is, uh, what is Hadoop 2? The other is, uh, what is YAM? So the simple answer is that Hadoop 2 is YAM, and it is an operating system to run various distributed data processing applications. So uh, I think a lot of people here have tried um, uh, Hadoop 1 before, have run MapReduce jobs before. before. Uh, we, we, you can well think the MapReduce have already served the people very well. Why do we still need to have YAM? This, the situation is that the world has been changed a lot. Hadoop is invented eight years ago, but now the hardware has been upgraded. It is much powerful than before. And the most important thing is that uh, more and more companies and institutes has adopted Hadoop as the data processing platform, and uh, they have different demands. For example, they want to use the interactive data processing model, and they want to use the streaming data processing models. If they will have this kind of requirements, the traditional MapReduce job, which is best for the batch job execution, is not good in this case anymore. So the, the first one and the most important uh, motivations for, our, for us to invent YARM is mm, to enable data processing models other than MapReduce. You can see in the following uh, diagram, the Hadoop 1 mm, architecture is a bit simple. The HDFS is at the bottom. On top of it, it is a MapReduce. And the pig and the hive are two high-level SQL-like uh, data processing language on top of it. But when we uh, migrate to Hadoop 2, the, uh, the Hadoop stack has been grown a lot. Uh, HDFS is still the bottom layer, but on top of it, it's no longer MapReduce. Instead, it's a YARM. The Hello? The system can run different um, kinds of applications. MapReduce is still one computation framework that can be run on YAM, but in addition to that, we can support the real-time data, uh, data process applications, the streaming data process applications, the graph process applications, as well as uh, some, some kinds of long-running service, such as um, um, HBase. And uh, actually, our colleague, uh, Ted, I'm not sure whether he is here. Um, he is going to give a separate talk about uh, HBase on YAM. If you are interest, is interested in this part, you can pay attention to that talk as well. The second mo motivation is that we have ob observed some drawbacks in the, the old MapReduce. Uh, if you know MapReduce well, you, you probably know the job tracker is taking a lot of workload. It is uh, doing the resource management. It is also managing the job's life cycles and monitoring them. So given we have a big cluster, say we have uh, 1,000 applications, 
10,000 applications or even more applications running on this cluster, the, mm, the job tracker is going to uh, tackling so many things such that it is going to be the bottleneck for the whole cluster to scale. The second thing drawbacks that we find is the efficiency. Uh, the, the, the traditional MapReduce cluster is always underutilized. This is because a, a host is always configured with uh, some fixed map and the reduced resource slots. So if a map reduce job is at the map phase, the reduced slot is going to be wasted. And when the map reduce job reaches the reduce phase, and the map map slot is going to be wasted. So the idea things is that we have some general uh, resource loss, such that uh, it is not associated to mapper, it's, it's not associated to reducer. Well, uh, when a mapper or a reducer tasks uh, want to be executed, it can take one slot on the host to, to do what it wants to do. So the last but not least is the resource sharing. Uh, as I have mentioned, uh, Yarn is going to run different kind of applications. And the different applications can be submitted by different users, different groups, uh, departments, or even companies. And uh, each uh, stakeholder want to at least get some share of the res uh, resource to run their application. And uh, another requirement is that different stakeholders don't want to be disturbed by each others. So we were like, we want to have some kind of mechanisms to ensure that uh, one stakeholder can get a share of the cluster and they also ensure different um, uh, stakeholders are isolated and will not be affect each other. So given these uh, motivations, we have a um, uh, spin of the um, job tracker and a task tracker logic out of MapReduce. And uh, now the MapReduce is a complete uh, computation framework. Um, and uh, we have uh, generalized uh, the job tracker and uh, task tracker logic to be uh, as general as possible to support all kinds of applications and uh, as well as long running services. Uh, fortunately, uh, in, in the uh, second half of last year, we have uh, released our first uh, stable version of Apache YAM, but we didn't just uh, stop there. We are still working hard to make this project as bad as possible. And uh, in this month, the Hadoop 2.4 is going to be released. And there will be the following cool features that will come with this uh, release resource management, uh, high availability, application history, historic data services, and the long-running application optimization. Here, I would also like to mention some um, young ecosystems. Um, MapReduce is for sure to able to run on YAM, but in addition to that, in the Apache Foundation, we have already a sort of other application that can run on YAM directly. One is Apache Test, it, it is either a batch or interactive job executor. Another one is a storm, it is uh, used to processing uh, streaming data and uh, Apache Jira to process a graph, Spark to do the iterative application, and uh, uh, HBase, which is going to run as a long-running service. Next, uh, I would like to introduce something about our young community. Uh, actually, uh, Yarn is a part of Hadoop. Hadoop is a very big community. We have uh, tens of uh, uh, PMCs, tens of uh, committers, but uh, among the, uh, these committers, we have a uh, 10 plus uh, dedicated uh, committers working on the Yarn project. And uh, in addition to that, we have uh, more than 20 contributors working on this project as well. In the last two years, we have already filed around 1,800 plus Jira tickets. And among these Jira tickets, we have already resolved or closed 1,100 plus. 
So it's a really amazing achievement in the past years. And this, uh, uh, thank you all the contributors to this project. Okay, uh, next I would like to go through some basic, basic stuff about EM to make sure you have some knowledge about how it, what it is and how it runs. There are four basic uh, concepts of Yum. Uh, Yum is actually running as a master slave paradigm. Uh, resource manager is the master of the whole cluster. It has a control has a, uh, of all the resources in this cluster, and uh, it is also going to be the main uh, um, access point for all the other components. Node manager is the slave, and it is going to take care of a specific host to monitoring the containers that are running on this host and also monitoring the resource on this host. Application master is actually a user land stuff, but it is also an important part of YARM. Um, users are free to implement the application master's logic but basically, it is, uh, it is required to contact resource manager and the node manager to uh, get the resource in the cluster and to start the container to run the application code. Also, the user is free to implement other logic to uh, monitoring the, the progress of the, um, its application and respond to the client about the um, application status. And the last important uh, uh, concept is container. We can uh, explain the container in two ways. The first is uh, it, it's an um, abstraction of resource. Um, we can consider it as a bunch of uh, resource such as uh, some amount of memory, uh, a number of uh, CPU cores, and uh, in the future, we might consider uh, the, the secondary storage into the resource as well. And uh, from the other side, we can consider the container as a process that is running some specific application code. After introducing the, um, the four basic concepts, I would like to go a bit deeper about the resource manager. The resource manager actually have the four major parts. And the core part is uh, uh, about resource manager is to manage uh, managing the life cycle of the applications. But uh, another important thing it is doing is to schedule the resource of the cluster and uh, doing the correct uh, allocation to the uh, each individual applications. In addition to that, there are three um, interfacing part. One of them is a client ARM service. The uh, uh, client ARM service is supposed to talk to the client. The client can re, uh, submit application, uh, queue application, and uh, get application status, and uh, you get cluster status via this service. Another one is application master service. This, um, this interfacing part is used to communicate with application master. That when the application master is started, it can do the registration and the unregistration with resource manager. Um, and, the, and there's another important thing is to uh, accept the resource request from the application master. And the last part is the resource tracker service. This part is uh, monitoring, is listening to the uh, heartbeat from the node, ma uh, node manager. Uh, node manager is supposed to contact the resource manager at a regular interval to update the host information with the resource manager. I will talk about the details next about the node manager. In the in the node manager, um, the, the, the components are a bit simpler. Um, it has three major parts. The, the core part is to managing the applications that uh, has running containers on this, uh, on this specific host, and, uh, the, uh, and also managing all the running containers on this host. In addition to that, there are two other parts. 
One is the container executor. The container executor is talking to the um, operating system directly to start the process to execute the exact application code. And another, the other one is a node status updater. This is a one that uh, node manager used to uh, talk to resource manager to let the resource manager know what uh, containers is running on this host and what container has been finished and whether this host is uh, still healthy, still has um, uh, available uh, spa uh, disk spaces, such a kind of stuff. So, uh, given you know, we have introduced the resource manager, node manager, and application, I would like to go through a typical workflow of a young application. First, the young application is submitted from a client to the resource manager. When the resource manager received the application, it is going to start a specific container to start the um, application master. After the application master is uh, successfully started, it is going to do registration uh, against the resource manager. This is a step to let the resource manager know the application master has been successfully uh, started. Then the application master can go, uh, can goes on, go on to uh, request the containers from resource managers. The resource manager has the scheduler to do the calculation on top of the available resource in the cluster and um, uh, uh, check some policies and respond the application master with some allocated containers. After that, when the application master received the allocated containers, it will contact node manager to start the container to run the application code. And during this period, when the application is running, client is free to contact resource manager and the application man uh, master to get the status, the report of the application. Mm. Uh, but on the application master side, uh, developers have to implement some kind of uh, um, information inquiry service such that uh, the client can ask for some application specific information. So after all the containers has been done and the application master has been notified of the completion, it will do on registration uh, with resource manager to let the resource manager, manager know uh, the application is safe to uh, finish. Then afterwards, application master is uh, safe to exit. That is the uh, complete flow of the uh, young application. Another thing I would like to mention here is a scheduler. It is actually a part of a resource manager, but it is so important to users, so I would like to speak about it separately. Um, users should, uh, actually the resource scheduler is, um, is a part that uh, decide what resource is going to be allocated to an application. So users should pay attention to it and uh, make the good decision on what scheduler they are going to use and uh, what configurations they, they want to do. And currently in Yarn, we have implemented uh, three type of scheduler. The first one is uh, FIFO scheduler. The second one is fair scheduler. The third one is a capacity scheduler. The FIFO scheduler is the most simp uh, the simplest one. Uh, if, for example, if uh, a user have a private cluster and uh, he is the only uh, application submitter and he doesn't care about any parallelism of it, it is sub uh, he submitted uh, applications, he can simply choose a, a FIFO scheduler such that all the uh, resource requests will be handled as uh, satisfied one by one. But for example, he really cares about the parallelism about his applications. He m might want to choose a fair scheduler. 
to ensure the, uh, the applications that are running simultaneously can get a fair share of the resource in the cluster. The first uh, scheduler is a bit smarter. It can um, uh, uh, um, distribute the, the whole class of resources uh, evenly to different application queues. And uh, even within one application queues, it's going on to distribute the resource evenly among uh, different applications. And uh, the most uh, sophisticated scheduler is a capacity scheduler. Uh, actually, this one is supposed to use for the multiple tenancy scenario. Give a cluster is shared by different groups, uh, departments, or companies. Uh, each stakeholder want to make sure uh, they can always get um, share from this uh, cluster to make sure that when they have application to run, they can run it. So this capacity schedule has a bunch of um, sophisticated uh, lower bound and upper bound check for the resource to allocate to uh, one, one application. And uh, also users have a, a bunch of, of uh, options to configure the capacity schedule to do the uh, right things to share the resource and the control the resource uh, to ensure the resource isolations for each stakeholders. So uh, I'm done for, from my part, and my uh, colleague is going to introduce something about the recent development of the Young Project. Hello? Yeah. Uh, th thanks, everyone, being here. Okay, in the remaining, I'm gonna talk about the, the most recent developments for the last few months we have, we have done for Young Project, and also I'm gonna talk about uh, the simplest way to write a Young application. Okay, uh, uh, yeah, as, uh, yeah, as we said, Hadoop 2.4 is coming out, I would say, by the end of this week, uh, uh, and uh, if anyone interested, uh, check it out. So resource manager had a, so and uh, we also included these features in the new release. Uh, resource manager have variability, have variability, and uh, application historical data service, which is quite similar to the uh, job history server in the old MapReduce version one. Okay, as as we know, uh, resource manager is the central authority to get resources and uh, give resources to the uh, to each each individual application. So it is a potential a single point of failure. And, and uh, also people want to manually take down the resource manager for just for upgrades, for uh, upgrade from an older version to a newer version. And so uh, the, goal, the goal is to make a resource manager downtime invisible to the outside users. Uh, the, the outside users should not be aware of the, the downtime of the resource manager. They, they don't need to uh, resubmit the application if the uh, resource manager fails or crashes. So it basically has two parts. The resource manager re re restarts. It, uh, it sets up the uh, ground work for persisting the IAM state and also pick up the state from the state, a uh, kind of state store and, and sort of uh, kick off the early application. And the, uh, the other part is a failover, how the resource manager is moving from one resource manager instance to another instance. So typically, if we, we want to save the uh, the, the, the state, we want to look at how, what are the state the resource manager has. So typically it has two kind of, two categories. The one is the static state, and the other is the running state. Static state is the state that never changes. Like the, the, the user submits the application. It tells the user, uh, sorry, it tell, uh, the user tells the IAM, uh, these are the context for this application. These are the command you should run for this job. These are the environment variables. These are the class paths and also the, the local jobs, job, uh, jobs, which is gonna be downloaded from the, uh, which is first put on the HDFS, and then will be downloaded from the HDFS when the node manager is launching the, the application master. And the other part is the running state. The, the, uh, essentially, it's an it's a internal scheduler, scheduler state of the resource manager, and this, uh, this, I would say, is the centerpiece of the work. <laughs> and uh, how, how can we reconstruct the state of the scheduler uh, such that uh, uh, we don't have to uh, reschedule all the application from scratch. So uh, first, we, we, we want to compare with the job checker architecture, the, 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 first, uh, the old version of Hadoop. 
So in job checker, it, it basically does two things. Uh, the resource measurement, which young resource measure does today, and also the application measurement, which young application master does today. So if we want to implement the same feature of job checker, we sort of have to persist both application management and some sort of state in both application management and the resource management. And, and that, that can be a, uh, a, a much overhead for the job checker itself. As, as people know, the persistence is always uh, the bottleneck in the whole cluster. So, uh, but in Yang, because we separate our this logic application management from the resource management. So in Yang, uh, we only want to persist the state which belongs to the resource manager itself in the case the resource manager uh, is failing or crash. So, and uh, when the resource manager comes up, because the application master is running on a different machine than the resource manager, it's all running on the node manager, essentially. So all the node managers and ap application masters can tell the, the newly started resource manager that these are, the, my, these are, my, are my outstanding requests. And uh, the node managers can also say these are the uh, containers which I have been running. Uh, and uh, you don't have to reschedule, reschedule, reschedule these containers again. And the resource manager sort of can reconstruct such schedule state for each application, individual application. Uh, and that, and, and I would say, uh, so the, the young architecture not only just uh, make, out, make, the, uh, make the performance boost, but it also gives us more opportunities to implement the, the feature in various ways. Okay, uh, this, 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 par this graph generally talks about uh, how the restart and the failover works. On the left-hand side, we have a bunch of node, uh, node managers uh, which maintain the containers, the process of each application. And on the, on the middle column, we have two, manager, two resource managers. Uh, one is active and the other is, uh, uh, is, uh, I mean, one is the current resource manager and the other is the previous one. And on the right hand side, uh, we have uh, a client, the client who submits the job and uh, also queries the state of the application. And as we can see, both resource managers share the same state store. And this state store is kind of a pluggable state store. User can define whatever state store they want. We, the available op options today, we have uh, H HDFS based uh, state store and also the Zookeeper based state store. So the, the failover uh, is. Uh, it's pretty straightforward because the, so in resource measures, in a pool of resource measures, we have, uh, we have an active resource manager <coughs> which recently all the requests uh, from node managers and the clients. And also we, uh, all the other node ma resource managers are in standby mode. So we are using the zookeeper for doing the new, uh, leader elections. And so whenever the active uh, resource manager fails. Uh, one of the standby resource managers will come up and uh, claim to be the active one. And the, on, the, on the transition from the standby mode to the active mode, the resource manager, uh, the, the newly started resource manager will load a state from the state store, which is the state is written by the previous resource manager about the application metadata, the application submission context. The, 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 the uh, so when the active resource manager, when the new resource manager is newly started, it will re also listen, the, listen to all these uh, reports from both node managers and application masters. So in, in case of failover, so uh, both node managers, application masters, clients, uh, should be obviously redirected to the new, new resource manager. And uh, we sort of implemented a library, the uh, uh, sort of a, an abstraction layer between the resource manager and the outstanding entities. Uh, so people use this, this proxy. So, it's, uh, so there are multiple options. So today we implement a pre, uh, sort of pre-configured list of resource managers. So the, the, the clients typically just uh, keep pulling and look into the list of active, uh, uh, look, into, look into the list of the resource managers and uh, keep pulling until it finds the one who is active. Okay, uh, another thing I want to say is the application history server. Uh, this is uh, motivated by the job history server in job tracker. 
uh, so I want to give more context about the job history server. So the, the map use job uh, works is it, it, it when, when while it is running, uh, it periodically writes the historic data onto HDFS, and uh, the when when the job finished or the job is removed from the memory, so the client will make a request uh, will make a request to the job checker and and ask for this application again. But this application is completely gone from the memory. Uh, so this request will be uh, redirected to a job history server, which is a separate daemon uh, sitting beyond the map reduce. And th this job history server uh, reads the persistent data, which is returned by the uh, running map reduce jobs. And only when the user asks for this application, uh, the, 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 job history the job history server will load this data and to serve such a request. So it's sort of an on-demand fashion. So uh, the goal is uh, we want to solve such application history in a more generic way. So each application, so we, we can imagine, so each application running on top of Yarn, if, pe if people want to implement e each server, such kind of history server for each application running on top of Yarn, that will be uh, clearly a not a scalable solution. And, uh, so we want to make a, such a, a more generic server, history server to, such, uh, to serve all the uh, applications uh, application for applications who want to save the historic data. So also, uh, typically we have uh, we have two kinds of uh, two categories of uh, information we want to save. The resource manager has its own uh, the generic information, the application state, how, what is the diagnosis of this application, what is the uh, the, the command uh, the, the context, and the also uh, similarly the at time the containers, what is the state, uh, what is the uh, the usage, what is the, the, resource, the resource consumption of this container, and the application master itself also writes, so because this is a user land code, application master itself uh, has to write some sort of uh, his specific uh, information which is specific to itself. And, and we also provide some interface for user to query. Uh, we have the RP, RPC uh, implementation, and also we have the uh, RESTful service implementation for the, for the user to make use of. And also uh, the history server itself has a history server UI, web UI, uh, which uh, it's quite similar to the web UI of the resource manager. This is a, uh, the general graph of how this whole thing works. On the left side, uh, the application master uses, uh, so we, we provide a right interface for each application master. Application master uses such a writer interface to write into a shared storage. And uh, similarly, on the right side, on the right side, the resource manager also writes the generic state, the app, the attempt, the containers, uh, using the interface to uh, shared storage. And on the middle column, uh, the, the, the history server, uh, only when the user asks for this uh, particular application, the history server loads such state. Uh, for this application from the state of state store, and uh, and run data in the web UI, or uh, give a restful uh, API. So, so long running service. So uh, so Yarn is uh, is supposed to be a very generic uh, platform for all kinds of applications. Uh, so some applications like MapReduce runs for hours, uh, days. It, it eventually finished, but the, there are other applications which never terminates, which just sets up some server and uh, listen for some requests. So uh, we want to make the disruptor impactive impacts uh, to keep the impact minimum to all the running applications. There are multiple works going on here. So the work preserving AM and restart. So today, so before this feature, so this is halfway implemented feature. So before this feature, the, when the we have a some way to restart the AM. Uh, we, uh, when the AM crashes, we, ha we have sort of configured the max AM attempts. So there, uh, the, the new, there will be a new AM study, but this new AM study is basically a new application which starts from scratch. And uh, in the meanwhile, the resource manager on the crash of this application will kill all the containers that are launched and monitored by this application and by the previous AM. So when the new start AM comes up, it lost all these containers it, it previously has. 
So what do we have what do we have done is to not killing these containers to have a way to rebind these previously running containers to the application master. So this is uh, this uh, this again uh, has to do with our new new architecture. So uh, the resource manager things has uh, resource manager state, and uh, when the AM crash because these two things are separately running on different machines. When the new AM comes up, it can query the resource manager that. Uh, where are my where are, where are my previous containers? And please give um, please give me back. And on the registration with the resource manager, resource manager can tell the the new AM that oh these are the containers you have. And uh, uh, you are not you don't need to rest, uh, you don't need to start start new containers. And another thing going on is the node manager restart. So it's it's quite similar. So when the node manager Process dies because the, the containers are running on different process. When the neural magic process dies, uh, we can all so before so today when the neural magic dies, all the containers belong to this neural manager die away with the neural manager. So we want to make sure even if the neural manager itself dies, the containers that are running on different process than the neural manager are not actually uh, killed. By this node manager, so the the new starter node manager can just rebind to these containers. That uh, and also uh, again, this uh, this is still not in, not in progress and not yet uh, implemented. So last thing I want to talk how to write a young application. Uh, so look at this graph for uh, for user. There's only two things a user needs to write. The client, the client somebody's job, the client to get the status of the application, and also uh, the the uh, the piece of work is the application master writes the uh, user land code to get a resource from the resource manager and to launch uh, launch containers on specific machines for its task. Uh, these are very so there are one two three seven. Several APIs. These are very native APIs to use uh, to write uh, the application code. Uh, we have uh, we have uh, beyond that we have a more high level library to for people to use the the young client which, which deals with the app, the interaction between the client and the resource manager, and the AMIM client which deals the interaction between the application master and the resource manager, and also the non magic client. Which deals the uh, the interaction between the application master and the node manager. Okay, uh, to 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 write a young application, typically we uh, so first the client gets the application IT, which is uh, uh, the, the which the client used to identify this application, and then the app, the client says uh, uh, the client construct the application context. This is essentially the metadata for this application. What is the command? What is the uh, class path and the, the, the job jars, et cetera. And uh, then it makes call to use the submit API to, get the, to, uh, to make the request to submit the application. Uh, so use the young client. This is the simplified code. So use the young client. First, we, we create a young client. Using the young client to get Created the application, and then uh, within the application, we construct the, the application context, and we set up the uh, the command, the environments, the jars, uh, etc. And then we say young client dot submit application with the given context. The other part is the so uh, given the application master is started on one of the uh, node machine, uh, node manager. Uh, so in the application master code, typically we just uh, re repeat what. Uh, what, are the, what are we have done for the application master, uh, we construct the content, container launch context. Uh, that we set up the commands, the, the, the environment variables. So, uh, the, the, so the first thing AM does is to register with IAM using the register application master API, and then it harvests with the resource manager, and uh, this harvest also serves as a, a, re, a request, a, a allocation request. It sends a request to resource manager, and the resource manager uh, returns uh, the containers back to the application master. And the application master uses these containers to launch its task on a specific machine. After the application is done, it uses the 
finish your application master API to say I'm, I'm done with this job. So there are a couple of things which are not too obvious. The, 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 the containers are, uh, allocation is completely asynchronous. So if you say uh, we get one to contain, we want to get some containers. Uh, so because uh, it totally depends on the on the schedule of the application. Oh, sorry, of, of the resource manager. It may or may not give you such containers depending on the consumption of the whole cluster and uh, what is the limit the, this application has. So the user typically needs to uh, to wait and make such requests again and again with zero containers, not with more containers. With zero containers, so using the same API, which I talk about, the allocation API, it serves as a heartbeat also, and wait until we get the request, and the request, and I don't think I we have enough time. Okay, this is uh, simplified. So on the node manager side, we have this such uh, three APIs to, uh, to start container, get a container status, and stop container. So these are typical code example. So the uh, I'm, I user creates the AMM client and the construct a container request and put it in the client. Say add a container request and then we wait. We inside the loop we wait until we get some containers uh, until the container size larger than zero. And and then we use the NM client uh, to create the client and for each response uh, returned by the AMM client we construct the con container launch context. And then we set up the, the commands. And also we can do monitor, say, NM client that dot get container status and say a stop container with a, a given container ID. So uh, ignoring, uh, so th here are some few takeaways. Uh, after this, I want, uh, I, we will recommend people to take away. So Yara is supposed to be a very generic resource management platform that can host uh, different uh, distributed applications that you can think of. This is, supposed to go in this, this whole architecture uh, allows user to go beyond the MapReduce, like uh, we, we can define different uh, batch processing, uh, the, the intact query models and the stream models. And also, the, uh, a big thing is uh, this allows us to share a single Hadoop cluster. So imagine you already have a, a MapReduce a Hadoop cluster. The, uh, you already have a young cluster. And you already have some MapReduce jobs, and you want to you want to uh, you want to make you want to write uh, submit some application like the uh, Storm Spark. You can just share the same data on HDFS. You don't have to set up, set up a new cluster and the, running the the corresponding frameworks. And so and also Yahoo is in production. So Yahoo is the uh, the the earliest one who adopt uh, Yang as the production. So they, they, they have thousands of nodes running a uh, daily basis. And also eBay, uh, I think, uh, recently shifted from the Hadoop 1 to Hadoop 2. So Hadoop 2 not only uh, Hadoop, uh, gives us the, uh, the performance boost. And also, uh, we, we welcome your contribution, any patch, any test, any uh, if you want to write an application and uh, telling us what are the things uh, missing, what are the things uh, are still uh, 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 what are things are redundancy? Uh, what are things uh, uh, we should do? And also, we have this link. So, uh, this link, uh, the the Jira link. Uh, people, if we, people want to learn the the very detailed code of the uh, of the young cluster, and uh, you can just mod. It's a very good way to learn this. Uh, to it's a very good way to learn the very detailed implementation of the young. Just by looking at this in, uh, different uh, Jira's, uh, pick whichever you are interested in. And there's a, this simple young app uh, on the GitHub, and people may want to check out. And last thing, this, uh, this book is out. This book uh, gives a very good detailed description of how young works, how the, uh, how, what is the individual component doing, and uh, what are the rationales behind the, the design, and uh, also how to write a young application. And yeah. And it's, it probably cost 30 bucks. Uh, yeah, question. Uh, any question? 
Any questions? Uh, you please. Uh, excuse me. What, what is the different? Uh, so you are. Saying, what is the difference between the traditional map reduce and Yang? No, no, no. Uh, traditional resource management in the cluster, like the wire. So, uh, traditional resource management, the traditional resource management in the cluster, like the wire. So, uh, the methods like. No, no. So, what is the difference between uh, uh, Yang and uh, the cluster resource resource manager like the soap? Web. Uh, sorry. Uh, so. It, uh, we, 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 uh, do you have an idea about the talk? And um, actually, um, I, I don't. Uh, uh, I'm, uh, I'm not aware of the system you are mentioned, but yeah. But the, for for the um, resource manager, the YARM, uh, it is actually a spin off from the original uh, Hadoop project, and it is supposed to be uh, first working for the MapReduce job. And uh, in addition to that, we find that we, we have a lot of other kinds of workloads, such as uh, uh, Storm, the, the test, and uh, even Spark. So we want to support different things. That, that is the reason we, uh, we spin off the resource management part from uh, MapReduce, and uh, we make a generic uh, layer and bring other kind of application into the full app, uh, Hadoop stack. You please. So, what languages have you seen um, Hadoop, oh no, uh, Yarn applications being written in? Have you seen all the JVM languages like Clojure and Scala? Um, actually, uh, there are two parts. The first is the client and uh, uh, application master. Uh, so for the client and the application master, uh, now we are supposed to use uh, Java to, uh, to write. Uh, because we uh, currently we just have the Java APIs for writing uh, application master and the client, but uh, we, are, we are st still working on it to make it um, better. For example, we have uh, already made the job submission of REST APIs such that in the future when you submit application, you don't need a Java client. You can have some other client written in other languages. and. Uh, on the other part is the, the, the code of your application logic. Uh, that part can be written in any kind of language you want. Yeah, uh, to, to, add, to add something. So, uh, so because Hadoop, in Yang, we use the protobuf, the Google protobuf, which typically any language you can interact with. So uh, given that, we, it, it's very likely that it's very possible we, you can use different languages to use the protobuf and to encounter with the Yang uh, young cluster, and uh, I think we already have an example using the Go language to uh, to do all the all the things application master and the client does, and uh, it's on the GitHub. You can just search for Go uh, Go Young and Go Hadoop. And, I think yes. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. Yeah. Thanks. Yeah, if, if you have any questions, we can talk about uh, Young offline.